What did you learn about value investing in relationship to mines in particular? And then how did that inform your decision to focus more particularly on gold? Well, actually, I did, I did something quite quite novel even in, in regards to that. I, I figured that as long as the mine truly had the, uh, the, the material wealth embodied in the mine, it, because it was drilled out and it was audited and it was basically tested through a, a public disclosure file uh, that's, that has to go through um, a securities commission or something like that, I, it was worth owning that mine even if it wasn't necessarily clear how you would get that mine permitted. And so I was buying mines that, um, you know, some people might say would have a difficult time of being permitted. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt that over time, the communities would work these things out as the, as the value of the, of, of the, of the, of the wealth. That's an intrinsic value uh, well, perspective to begin with, yes. right? Because your notion there is that because that Voting has intrinsic value, yes. the market, which would be the regulatory yes. environment in some sense, is we'll going to change. converge on yeah. a appreciation of the value. And I, you can see that now in the UK where you're burning coal again. Yeah, exactly. Right, that, that would right. be a perfect example. So, mm -hmm. so someone like me, I, I never invested in coal, but someone like me might have purchased a coal mine six years ago uh, for pittance, you know, because people told them this will never be permitted again. Right. And then, but now, it's coal. Yes, exactly. And you can burn it. Yeah. And, right. and, and I would argue that with coal, you know, the argument isn't so clear because you don't necessarily need. It, you know, coal is a great source of energy, of course, in terms of its energy density, mm -hmm. um, and and in terms of the UK having a lot of coal nearby. Mm -hmm. um, Cheap but, too. Yeah, but with metals, it's it's easier to make that estimation. You know, so you know, just give you a, a very basic example if. If the world truly wants to electrify uh, the global fleet of, of, of cars, um, we basically don't really have enough copper to do that based on what we know today, the reserves, the economic reserves. So at the very least, uh, we're going to be uh, taking down a lot of mountains uh, around the world if we want to get just the amount of copper that we're estimating, you know, to sell 100 million cars a year. Um, and the same is true of something like nickel, which is— We can just solve that by forbidding people to have cars. Well, that's, that seems like uh, what might happen. Um, but with nickel, it's even easier. And, and with gold, it's, it's the easiest. Easiest in, in uh, what way? In terms of you're always at a shortage of gold. It's the hardest thing to get out of the ground. Um, and it just keeps getting harder and harder and harder. So there's this difficulty curve. Uh, it's almost like— um, is, it, is it harder than uranium? Is it harder than the, even the heavy? Oh, yeah. yeah is. Uranium is quite abundant, actually. The, the thing about uranium is it needs to be enriched into U208 or whatever U2— mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, And so, so that's the real cost in it. It's not the—I mean, th there's quite a bit of uranium around the world, and its crustal abundance is, is you know, it's not, not special uh, at all.